King David family and friends, and welcome to eChurch 2021. I'm Pastor John Montgomery, and we're glad that you've joined us today. Stay tuned as God blesses our hearts. Come on and celebrate our risen Savior. He got up, y'all, with all power in his hand. Didn't he say he would do it? So come on along with me. Come on along with me and celebrate because he has risen. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is alive and well. We have reached a point in our service where everyone can participate. It's offering time. It's better to give than to receive. We realize that we are a tithing church. It's not anything that we do just by chance, but it's an obligation that we have so that we won't be under a curse. God wants us to give that 10% just 10%. And then it's for the kingdom building. We want to realize that the church has to operate. The church has things that they have to do daily. MTG doesn't give us any slack. So we have to know that the church lights have to stay on. We have to meet our obligations. He said, 
the more you give, the more he gives to you. So it's better to give than to just receive. I want you now to give wholeheartedly and know that God blesses you, a cheerful giver. We will have our devotional at this time. Our scripture will be done by Bishop Mark Marcel, and our prayer will be done by Deacon Charles Laird. For our opening reading, I will read from the King James Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 20 through 24. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all died, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the firstfruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God. Even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. These are the reading of God's holy word. Amen. Let's bow our heads in honor of the Lord. Dear Lord our God, we come to you today with bow down heads and humble hearts, thanking you for this day, O oh Lord. Dear Lord, we have struggled through this year. We have tried to do better than we did last year. However, Lord, we have sins. We come now, Lord, laying our sins before you, praying for your forgiveness, Lord, praying that you'd have mercy on us. Dear Lord, we thank you so very much. We come now, Lord, through this year to celebrate another Resurrection Sunday, O oh Lord, the birth death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you so Lord for our Lord. We thank you Lord. We honor you in everything we do 
and say, O oh Lord. We now thank you, O oh Lord, for our pastor. We pray, Lord, that you keep your arms around him and his loving family, O oh Lord, that you protect them, O oh Lord, that you guide them in all things they do. We thank you, Lord, for the First Lady of the church. We also thank you, Lord, for the congregation and the administrative staff of this church, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord, that you keep your loving arms around all of us. The Lord, we ask also that you look down on the sick and shut in, that you bless them, O oh Lord. They struggle also. You know their needs. We, Lord, we pray, Lord, that you would come down and reach, put your arms around them, bless them in a way that only you know they need, O oh Lord. We pray, Lord, that all the things we do is pleasing in your sight. This Lord, dear Lord, we've had a difficult year. We've gone through some hard times, some fears, some death, a lot of real serious concerns that we've had to deal with during this past year. We come now, Lord, knowing that you made it, allowed us to make it through, oh Lord. We thank you so much for all you do. We pray, Lord, that the things we do be pleasing in your sight. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen, amen, amen.
Oh, I know you're ready now, and they're ready too. Our praise and worship team will take us higher and higher in the Lord on this day of celebration. Oh! 
your spirit lives within me so i will walk in your peace your spirit lives within me like to say thank you Lord for all you have done how you have brought us through this pandemic thus far as we look back over the last 12 months it is crystal clear that your loving mercies have been translated to us through the power of Jesus Christ oh how you have blessed us when Jesus got up he had all power in his hands. With that power, he was not limited to the unprecedented devastation of this pandemic. When he was resurrected, he rose with power to heal, for he is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals. That includes not just physical healing, but spiritual, emotional, financial, and every area where there is a need for healing. He extended that power of love to us, for he is faithful. What we need to do is exercise our faith, for without faith, it is impossible to please him. Our faith comes and our faith comes from him because we know that without faith, it is impossible to please him. And he works on our behalf when we show ourselves faithful to him. If we reflect back on our lives and are honest with ourselves, most of us have not consistently served God in spirit and in truth. We must walk by faith and not by sight. Because many times what we see in the natural is diametrically opposed to what God has for us. We must follow Jesus in totality. We can't look to the left or to the right. We must look to the author and the finisher of our faith, Jesus Christ. Just as death came into the world by one man named Adam. Now, 
our resurrection comes through Jesus Christ because we belong to him. We will be raised with him through his resurrected power when he comes back. Jesus' faithfulness is guaranteed to empower us as we do the right thing. When we stay connected to him, for I am persuaded that nothing, not even a pandemic, can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Good morning, Greater King David family. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I'd like to just spend a few minutes this morning talking about the consequences and the things that have happened with my family during this COVID period. My family have been touched very closely during this time. We have had several family members that actually test positive with all the symptoms and all, but thank God they all made it through, except one major loss that we did have where we lost a very loving aunt. Just recently, during the time when this stuff was supposed to get better. But then, that's what the resurrection is about. And we say thank God for the resurrection of his darling son, Jesus, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Because we know the resurrection is about life. We know because of the resurrection, sickness and death is defeated. We know that good will triumph over evil. We know because it's in the word and through our faith, we believe. But it's just not about what's going on in the pandemic. Through our daily prayers, we need to realize that we still need to give him the proper place and honor and glory. Because with everything going on, with all the hard times that we're going through, I know for me and my family, we are still being blessed. We are being blessed on a daily basis. The blessings are flowing, be it financial or it's just bringing our family together as one. Because of the resurrection, because our darling son Jesus lives and he lives for us. Now God knew that we would go through times like these and he would knew we would have to have something someone to bring us through it. That's why he gave us the darling son, Jesus. That's why he bled the blood to cover us. But the task wasn't finished until he got up on that great getting up morning and came back to life so we could have life. And we know, as my family know, in our faith in the word and Jesus Christ, this is what has sustained us through this troubled time. And we know going forward, as we get through it, he'll still be with us. He'll still be with us all, King David. So remember, let's keep faith in the resurrection. Let's keep faith in our live, living Savior, Jesus Christ. And I think it was Ty Tribbett that said it. We can still say hallelujah in and how. God bless y'all.
which the Lord hath made, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. He is risen. Hallelujah. I said he is risen. Come on, everybody, wherever you are, give him praise for he's worthy of our praise. To God be the glory this Easter Resurrection Sunday morning. We're so grateful to God to be alive and well and able to give him the praise. When I think of his goodness and all he's done, not only just for me, but for each and every one of us, that's something to give him praise for. Hallelujah. Can somebody shout hallelujah to the glory of God? God is moving by His Spirit, moving all over the earth. Signs and wonders and He's moving, moving, oh Lord, in me. Signs and wonders as he's moving. Jesus, there's just something about that name, Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Oh, oh my Jesus, 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 that on heaven and earth. Kings and kingdoms, they shall all pass away, but there's something about that name. Yes, there's something about that name. Yes, there's something about that name. Hallelujah. 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 To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, as we come to you now prepared to hear from you, we pray that you'll speak to our hearts, each and every one of us. We thank you so much for Jesus all that he has done is doing and shall do for us 
We thank you this Easter Resurrection Sunday morning for the awesome price that Jesus paid and the fact that he got up confirms that he is Lord. And so we bless the name of Jesus. Now God, do in us as you desire. Speak through your word and through your servant. Speak to the people of God and the hearer's heart. And we'll be ever so careful to give you all praise, glory, and honor. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God everywhere said amen. Amen. I want to call your attention this morning to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 20. I'd like you to consider verses 21 through 26 uh, for the fullness of the understanding, but I'm going to read verse 20 of the first Corinthians chapter 15. And the word of God says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Praise God for the word of the Lord. I want to speak from the subject this morning. The end of a thing is the beginning of another. The end of a thing is the beginning of another. I want you to understand the theme or the subject because in life you're going to discover that the end of a thing is a cycle that begins another. For instance, at the end of life is the beginning of death. At the end of truth is the beginning of a lie. At the end of up, is the beginning of down, and so on and so forth. You will recognize three things about my theme today, my subject today. One, that it is varied in its couplings, which means pretty simply that it applies to many, many, many things in life. Secondly, it is vicious in its cycle because the truth of the matter is when one starts and completes its cycle another begins and so it is vicious in its cycle be it good or evil and then thirdly it is victorious in its conquest and I think you need to understand, my brothers and sisters, that this word today helps us to understand that when this life is over, for the non-believer, it is death. But even that death is not the end, because after death comes the judgment. And so you must realize that there are consequences in how we deal with those things that are in cycles of life. Listen, if you will. The Bible says in verse 20 of the fifth, first uh, Corinthians chapter 15, but now is Christ risen from the dead. And conjunction here tying it together become the first fruits of them that slept now what I need to tell you is Paul is addressing the issue of the Jews not believing in the resurrection not believing that once a person is dead that they can and or will rise again especially in the Lord Jesus Christ and one of the things you're going to understand is that Paul is making clear 
that your theology is twisted. If you think you are a believer in Christ Jesus and don't believe that you're going to rise again from the dead, you need to recognize that if Jesus lived and died and rose from the dead, then all those in him shall rise from the dead after death as well. And I think it's important to understand when we shout on this uh, Easter resurrection Sunday morning about he rose, he rose, he rose up from the dead. He also is an example for us to understand what he did we also shall do likewise. It's important to understand that it's not all over on Resurrection Sunday morning. So many believers put a period at the resurrection. But I need you to know that it's not over just because Jesus rose. And that's one of the things Paul is dealing with. Uh, to those who were at the church of Corinth and to the believers here today. Now also, listen to what he says, verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Listen, he's making clear that through Adam, death came to all mankind. And because it came through one man, listen, God, through this vicious cycle, is making clear that through one man also shall life and resurrection come through Jesus Christ. So the Bible says in verse 22, for as in Adam all died, listen, also in Christ Jesus shall all be made alive. All be made alive. But you have got to be in Jesus. You've got to accept him as your Lord and Savior. You've got to know him for yourself in order on that day when life ends on this side to know that you will be in the presence of the Lord. Paul says this early in the fifth chapter. A verse absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. No longer after the resurrection did the saints who die have to spend time in Hades uh, waiting on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because one of the wonderful things that happened at Calvary was in the three days that he was supposedly dead, he went down to hell and he began to minister to the saints who had died in faith waiting on him and he unlocked all the cells of the saints and then early that Sunday morning when he got up and marched down the streets of Jerusalem, those who were dead in Christ got up with him and marched down the streets also. And from that time forward, no longer did saints wait their souls in hell. So he's making clear that we too shall rise as Christ rose. But I want you to understand something. The 23rd verse makes clear that this is a reality that every man has to rise in order, in order. In other words, Christ, the first fruits, and then afterward, they that are Christ's after his coming. Now let me help you understand something, brothers and sisters. One of the things that we must know 
uh, why Resurrection Day is so important to the believer, why it is so important to understand what this day means to the believer with the understanding of what Jesus has done for us beyond the resurrection. You remember when Lazarus died and Jesus raised him? You remember when Jairus' daughter died and Jesus raised her? You remember when the widow of Nain's son died and Jesus raised him? Now, notice I didn't say resurrected them because Jesus is the first fruits of them that slept. But you say, preacher, Jesus raised them from the dead. Yes, he did. But what he did, listen, was he resuscitated them. He revived them. He brought them back to life only to die again. But once you are resurrected, you don't die anymore. I wish I had a witness here. So you say to me, well, what was the purpose of him raising them from the dead. You remember he told Martha and Mary, I am the resurrection and the life. Do you remember he spoke to them and made it clear and asked them, do they believe this? And so all of those were examples. The, res uh, 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 the resuscitation was a revelation of the resurrection that was to come in totality. They were looking at what they were looking for and hope one day to experience eternally. And so brothers and sisters, you've got to see our time is coming. And when Jesus comes back, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And those of us who are alive and remain shall be changed and caught up to meet him in the air. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Listen, I need you to know the resurrection was the end of a dispensation that helps us to know that Christ is our Savior. But he is not just Savior. He's Lord. He is Lord. And oh, my brothers and sisters, one of the joyous things about the word is that because Jesus rose from the dead, listen, he defied death, he defeated death, and the record is he will destroy death. Well, when did he defy death? I'm glad you asked. He defied death when he said, no man taketh my life, but I lay my life down. And if I lay it down, I can take it up again. He defied death. But secondly, he defeated death. Well, when did he defeat death? Oh, you remember when they hung him on the cross and he went through the agony of pain and he gave up the ghost and died. But three days later, he rose, he rose, he rose. And that meant he defeated death. But brothers and sisters, listen. The Bible tells us in that 25th and 26th verse of 1 Corinthians 15, listen, for Christ must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. And then verse 26 says, <laughs> and I love this, I love this, that, 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 that what the last enemy 
that shall be destroyed is death. Somebody ought to say praise the Lord. Somebody ought to say thank you, Jesus. Somebody ought to say hallelujah. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. Oh, my brothers and sisters, I need to tell you that at the end of this world, the heaven and the earth is the beginning of a new world. And John saw it in the book of Revelation in that 22nd chapter when he made clear, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And he's talking in the 21st and 22nd chapter. And he's talking about that that began after the end of this world that we know as earth and heaven presently. My brothers and sisters, I need you to know you've got so much to shout about this Easter Resurrection Sunday morning. There are so many things I could tell you about Jesus, but many of them you already know about. And I want to tell you as I conclude that if you really want a true and intimate and personal experience with Jesus, you've got to know that the Lord Jesus has got this thing fixed. To God be the glory for all the things he has done, is doing, and is getting ready to do. God bless you and happy Resurrection Day to you. We're at a time in our service where the word of God has gone forth mightily. But it's decision making time. We pray that the Holy Spirit is tugging at your hearts to realize that if you have not made a decision to be on the Lord's side, now is the time. In times like these, we need a savior. We need an anchor. We need the Lord. Maybe you've already been baptized. And for some reason, You've lost your way from the body of Christ. But he always stands at the door knocking for you to come on in. He loves you with an everlasting love. If he has to reach way down, he'll pick you up. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Won't you let him in? been baptized and have Christian experience but you just don't have a church home at this time well greater King David said come on in and we'll have a good time in the Lord if you don't want to join our church I advise you to get with someone and not be on the outside where the enemy can attack but you want a fellowship with the assembly of Christ. Well, if you've never made that decision, you can say at this time, Lord, I'm a sinner. I stand in need of not just prayer, but I need a savior. I need someone I can talk to and tell my troubles to. I need you, Jesus. But I just didn't know what it would take for me to, to make it to you. But I heard in your word that you're standing with outstretched arms. I need you. I want to be saved by grace. Lord, forgive me now. I'm a believer. I know that God raised Jesus from the dead. And they said, if I confess with my mouth and believe with my heart, I'm saved. Well, that's what I'm admitting this Sunday morning. 
because you got up, you went to the cross to save me. And I realize that and I thank you, Lord. So I'm making a decision to get on the Lord's side. A simple prayer, a simple plea. And he says, yet while you're calling, I've already answered. So for that, Lord God, we say thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.